¡Mira, puto! ¡Si no compras shit underwear, te voy a partir la reputa madre! ¡Mira aquí pone esos huevos para que te los reviente! ¡Ve a shitunderwear.com! ¡Usa el código RRBG y salva 20% o te voy a reventar la vida! Eddie. What's up, Dave? What's up, man? Can you hear me? I hear you. Great. Because I, <laughs> I got this new computer and I didn't know how to use this, uh, the, the microphone and all that. Ah, and I, yes. sat in, I sat in on the Voivod Dimension Hatros and nobody could hear <laughs> Oh, no. I got you. I, I hear you. Down, Great to see you, man. Yeah, man. It's been too long. Yeah. Stupid pandemic preventing yeah. me from hanging out with friends. <laughs> I know, right? Oh, man. Um, I'm just going to... How you doing over there? You burning up? Um, I've, I'm good. It's I have AC. Good. <laughs> I have a central air conditioning. So, I mean, on, on, until someone mentions it, that's when I realize, oh, yeah. <laughs> There's a problem outside. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, a lot of I'm friends are like... Yeah, <laughs> man, yeah. A lot of people are, are burning up, uh, not just temperature-wise, but also fires and stuff. Thankfully, where we're at, there's no fires. Um, and like I said, AC, it's like magic. I, it's always 71 degrees. Yeah. So I, uh, I, I pulled out a beer. It's a little early, but whatever. I'm, I have to have a beer with you. It's four o'clock over here. There you go. <laughs> and I figured I'd go I'd go uh, regional for you. Okay. So I got me a oh, hearty, nice. hearty wood little Christmas morning that I've been holding on to. Yeah, you're so, going big early. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got uh, my beer of the summer. Italian, the Italian Pilsner. Pilsner. Nice. Yeah, I uh, ran out of Pilsners. I've been drinking a lot of them lately, and I, I ran out, and, and this was in the fridge. I'm like, this works, I guess. I'll yeah. drink a Pilsner later. What size go. glass you got? This is a Cosmic Eye, one of these things. I don't know what size got, this is. I just got one of those too. Nice. But I'm, I'm using my little my little cane glass. Nice, nice. Yeah. Uh, I feel more accomplished when I drink a bunch of small glasses. Right. It feels like you're drinking more than just one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cheers. Going, cheers to you. Let me take a sip. Just as good as I remember. Beautiful. I love I love that beer. I like the Kentucky one better because it's barrel aged. But yeah, you know, you know Hardy, Hardywood makes great beers. Consistent. They just redid the whole brewery. It's the original uh, space. I know in B Lane. Okay, I haven't been and there since also, that last time that we you know we hung out there. But uh, yeah, they you know. moved uh, one. They moved to a new building right next door. Okay. Knocked down the original location. They own both of them but they moved everything over to the other building and they actually built a mega facility 20 miles west of me. Mm. It's massive. It's, it's gorgeous as well. That would explain how there is Hardywood available here. At, oh at, yeah. Uh, in California at Trader Joe's. <laughs> yeah. yeah they, they got a contract for do that. Cause I remember Unibro was doing that for a while and it might be by state or region or something like that, but I've seen Hardywood at quite a few of the Trader Joe's. I don't know what the, the whole contract is but i think it's cool that they're up in there hell yeah 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 i remember thinking it was crazy that they had cigar city at uh trader joe's and then when i started seeing hardywood i'm like ooh, even better that's crazy yeah, i hope cool. i mean I, I i immediately looked at the label to make sure it was still like being made in virginia and like it wasn't like mass produced somewhere else and then sent to trader joe's but yeah they're still brewing in virginia so that's awesome yeah, when you come out next, I'll take you there. It's gorgeous. It's it's huge. It's probably the biggest brewery here out of all the the new new people. It easily is. Yeah, I, I, except I, for I, except for Stone. Stone. <laughs> oh, that's Stone right. looks like a maximum security prison. It's gigantic. <laughs> hmm. I remember when I vi the last visit, they were still building it. It was still mm -hmm. under construction. So, and it looked yeah, big. It's now. Yeah, it's huge. Is that uh? Is that Bart Laffler? Who am yeah, I hearing no, back actually, there? That's actually Radler. Radler, okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I guess I'll do an intro. I'm going to keep all of this anyway. But what's up, everyone? Welcome to the RRBG podcast. I'm here with my good homie Dave Witty. 
I would call everybody. not just a musician, professional musician, but a professional beer man at this point, I would say, right? You have a number of beers under your name at this point. I like beer a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I do, and I appreciate everything that goes into it. That's important. Yeah, yeah you're you know you're not just slapping your name on products. You're actually a fan of the process, of the brewing process. You're you're you know you've worked at you know serving beer at at, at Mekong's and other places as and well. Arden. I'm sure, Arden. Yeah, Arden and the answer. And the answer, yeah. So I mean, you're 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 a fan through and through. And yeah, how many? Yeah. So how many? How many beers do you have now under your belt? Like that are yours? That are you know creations that you've been a part of? Oh man, I don't remember. Uh, <laughs> That's a big number then. <laughs> I don't even remember anymore. Yeah, I all the band beers are uh, there's one, two, three, four, five. Cigar five. City, two with two with Floyd's, one with Sam, Cosmic Eye. Yeah, and then one with Neshaminy Creek. By the time this comes out, I'm sure the the announcement will be out. But I know that there's another one with Sam coming. Yeah, two point oh. We got a uh, a test batch. I haven't gotten to it yet. Okay, okay. Yeah, he he tried teasing it. I'm like, I know Dave when I see him. <laughs> He's like, oh, it's a surprise guest. I'm like, I know his hands. It's very hard not to. <laughs> <laughs> I love Sam. You yeah. ever hear the story of how we met? No, tell me. We met at GABF, and he was wearing some Mastodon thing, and I was wearing some Mastodon thing. And mm. we're both like, oh, Mastodon. And, and that was it. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> For real. Yeah. We've been friends ever since. He's he's a great guy, man. I mean, that's oh, similar was. similar to how I met him. I met him. He was dropping off beer for Intronaut at a show um, or, or something like that. He, he was bringing – they had a keg of his beer. Something like that happened. And I remember – seeing his his mastodon tattoo and i'm like i i have one <laughs> and then we oh, became yeah. friends yeah that role <laughs> yeah and you know after that like he you know he brought his daughter out here took him took him to uh beard papas which you took me to oh yeah yeah i'll bring olive olive to uh we, yeah she, she loved it she loved it like afterwards i got texts from sam like hey, olive keeps talking about you and and the beard papas i'm like well she should yeah, thank yeah. witty <laughs> that rules. Yeah, man. It was. It's. It's. Lo I love when we're able to connect many different people from different states like that. Like it's just. It's a family. And so, yeah. Whenever, whenever he travels here, he knows he has a place to, to or a person at least to hang out with. And you know, I, I, I. That's one thing that you've always. I've wanted you back on the show forever, dude, because you were number two. On on the podcast, you were episode number yeah, two. And how many years ago was that? Now four or five now Damn. and and <laughs> you know even before that but after that you know we've stayed friends you've been one of the nicest people i've ever met i i bring you up almost every other podcast i mention how awesome you are and and what a nice guy you are because honestly that 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 really blew me away like when we first met was over at i think it was a tour not it was you, you were touring you were playing in miami and i brought you a case of beer from cigar city I think yeah. that was the first time we met. And then, immediately, then you came up for then you came up for barbecue. Yeah, we came up and you immediately were like, "Yeah, come stay at my house." I'm like, "But you don't know me. What if I'm like a weird <laughs> you know, violent person, but I'm not, thankfully." Uh, yeah. But I appreciated I've always appreciated that about you and and how, you know, hospitable and and every time I've been to Virginia, it's been such a blast. Like I keep convincing my wife she's she's like uh we've been talking like if we leave california where do we go and i always i mean i want to go to richmond let's go <laughs> it's it's such a nice spot a mountain scout yeah i gotta bring her out there so she can see it's just it's yeah. it's such a nice welcome. place you know yeah you're welcome anytime <laughs> I, another thing that I learned in Virginia that I've never I've never seen anywhere else, and I'm I'm kind of blown away by that is the uh, the pho, the pho, uh the bon mi with the pho dip that we had uh, at the oh, yeah, the Viet dip the Viet dip dude I've never yeah, seen Viet that dip. anywhere that's Tweed's creation and actually Tweed uh, took over the the kitchen at, at the answer she ramp revamped the venue and all that stuff nice. and that sandwich should be there. There's yeah. a lot of other stuff from the tap house menu. That's the place that April and I ran. Mm -hmm. 
uh, the, where she ran the kitchen there. So she took everything, well, a lot of it. And uh, yeah, that's a great sandwich. I actually want to do a vegan version of it for Hank Space. Yeah, so tell it's me about good, Hank Space. Doable. Tell me about Hank Space. How's, uh, it, how's it been doing? Good. We just reopened the dining room maybe about three weeks ago, and we've seen a little increase in people coming in and getting more comfortable about eating out. Uh, you know, yeah. All safety protocols and all that stuff's in place. You know, how, however comfortable you are, what level you're at, you're welcome. But uh, we kept going through that whole year and a half. We shut down for like two months. Hmm. Uh, and then we were takeout only, and it was bonkers for a little while. We like because we had no staff. Oof. It was just us and the other owners, and uh, we were just doing everything ourselves. And it, it was it was a quite an eye opening experience. <laughs> a little yeah, bit man. stressful because it was so it got so everybody wanted takeout, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You got gotta so, start figuring out use, delivery services and. No, well that's the thing. We didn't use any of that stuff because they were taking so much money. Oh, okay, okay. And, and like at one point they didn't because they felt like they shouldn't in the pandemic, you know. But and then it just reverted back to the same gouging. So we we never really used that stuff. Okay, so it's just people coming in for takeout nonstop. Yeah, well, they weren't allowed inside. It was just all phone or internet orders. Well, I'm glad to hear it survived, man. A lot of businesses didn't make it. <laughs> people and, and it was, had to shut down, you know. And it was a double doozy too, because right before that. We had our first opening, and our first artist was Catboy, one of, uh, uh, Justin Anderson, who's mm. a, a brewer at the Vale. Mm. Okay. So we had him do a show, and, and you know it was really good. He sold a bunch of art. We whizzed through a bunch of beer. That you know, we actually had Vale cans at at Hank's Beach, which was which was super awesome. Nice. And then the Chinese place next door to us flooded us out, and we had to shut down and. For like for at least a month, they ruined everything. We had to have you know literally like, flooded like water. Yeah, through the walls and all that stuff. Ooh. There was so much damage, so we shut down. Then we opened back up, and then the pandemic hit. It was like a double doozy, but we you know we 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 survived. So we're we're super thankful for everyone that actually supported us and came in and ordered food. It's amazing. Yeah, I you know I did see that a lot. I I did it myself. Like I, I you know I felt compelled to just support more because during the pandemic in the beginning i was like i'm gonna stock up on meats and veggies and whatever and i'll just cook and we'll be fine we don't have to go outside i'll cook but right. then after when i noticed that places like grill the mall were open and uh the fourth horseman out in long beach i was like you know what i need to support the homies because if they're still trying then I, they need our help you know and I, I do feel like a lot of businesses restaurants specifically um did get to survive because of the the ability to take out and and some of the loosening of the laws too with with alcohol like uh, yeah yeah to go everything yeah grill them all was able to sell beers to go so that was cool uh, same here was, we weren't because we're in a shopping mall uh like a, a shopping uh supermarket shopping center mm. so we have a non-compete so we can't we can uh, on license you know on premise only okay but that was lifted and we were able to sell to go actually i talked to harkins quite a bit during that whole thing and we were bouncing stuff off one another nice nice yeah i'm glad that they survived and and you know flourished really because I, I i know that they were busy as hell i was i talked to nikki a lot who she like helps you know harken a lot run the place you know right. nikki right yeah mm -hmm. yeah but yeah um i and we were in talks about doing i was about to do an event there with barnett Josh Barnett and have like a burger and a whole thing. And right when the pandemic hit, it was ridiculous. Like right at the same time, like, like, oh, man, yeah. <laughs> that, that would have been great. Um, but the natural suplex. Yeah, dude, it's, it's nuts. I'm just glad that we're slowly getting back to it. And I'm starting to see shows. I bought tickets to a show today. <laughs> it was like, I, I was King Crimson tickets. Nice. Nice. I just bought tickets to, uh, Meshuggah, um converge and Damn. torch what a, uh, what a lineup That's yeah great. <laughs> yeah it's funny because i was like i could probably contact torch and you know those are my homies from miami but then i was like no i don't want to be that guy i'm gonna buy a ticket and if they want to put me on the guest list after that great I, i'm still gonna buy a ticket because i want to support the homies like this is nuts same, same thing here man i have a lot of friends coming through like some of them are playing big amphitheaters and stuff and i was like you know what i'll get lawn seats 
And if, yeah. you know, if they don't invite me back, great. But I'm not going to be that guy asking for a guest list. Exactly. That's such a weird vibe, man. Like they, they, they have people hitting me up for tickets or things. I'm like, no, buy a ticket. <laughs> they just spent a year and a half unemployed. Can you like yeah. support a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's I'm crazy. Yeah. Um, it, it's exciting, too, because I you almost got spoiled, like knowing people in bands and stuff. You like get in and hang out. It's yeah. kind of exciting to like buy a ticket and be a fan and you know like I we got me Lars and Greg got King Crimson tickets and I'm psyched on that and we're buying Judas Priest tickets so we're just gonna go <laughs> and have a play. I can't wait to see yeah. the concert again. It's gonna be amazing. Yeah, man, it's such it's been such a like I've I'm not gonna lie the pandemic did me well in terms of finances. I was able to save money. I was dropping a lot of money you know driving around parking going out to concerts and and dropping a ton of money on drinks and whatever and beers right. that, you know so it, it, it helped me financially but you know some at some point like halfway through the pandemic i i i, I remember watching um it was the tesseract live live stream mm -hmm. and uh like halfway through i started crying and my wife's like what's wrong with you i'm like I miss concerts. <laughs> and I miss you're not alone, shows. Man. It was a it was a, an emotional roller coaster for yeah. lots of people. Like I went to the highest high and the lowest low, and like bummed out, depressed, this, that, the other thing. And, and then I realized at one point I was like, oh yeah, I'm not the only one that's going through this. Okay, I feel yeah. a little bit better about this right now. Yeah. I, I had to, no motivation. You know, there was there was a lot of things going on in there, but. Then you realize that you're not alone, and it, it was pretty helpful. Yeah, man. Yeah, I can. I just. Yeah, I can't imagine yourself because you. You know, I'm. I'm not playing in a band anymore, but I. You know, I'm a fan, and I like going to shows. And you are a fan of going to shows, but also, that's like a big part of your livelihood, being yeah, you know yeah, a performer exactly. and being on tour, being able to do the thing, and especially for waste shows that are so lively and. You know the the crowd surfing and the and it's it's like is high energy. I I started thinking like man, is that ever gonna come back? And and then you know I see the few shows that have happened now, and I'm like, oh, it's back. <laughs> People don't care anymore. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. That, yeah, that was that was my big depression. That when the depression hit, it was more of that like, oh, is this it? Like, because in the back of my head, I always had this thought of like, the, eventually the world's gonna evolve to this weird virtual reality thing and i started believing like well this is happening look at all these interviews and i was like oh no yeah. this is it this is it this is where live shows go away forever and thankfully that's not the case so yeah i, I had like i talked to a lot of friends that i have a lot of friends that tour and play music and i had a few of them are like man that's it we're done like you know <laughs> yeah. it was such a head fuck. it was a head fuck yeah i mean it's so my, uh, Right now, for you, for Waste, you have a show uh, in Vegas? Oh, yeah, that, yeah. We, well, first of all, we're playing the Decibel Beer Fest. Oh, yes. And then uh, it's crazy. We're, like, getting shot out of a cannon the first weekend out because we're playing the Decibel Beer Fest and then, L, and then in Las Vegas the next day. Wow. <laughs> so we just got to get a play, get on a plane, and go out there. The what is this Vegas show? Is it's uh punk rock it's bowling? The, it's a punk rock bowling. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, say. we're playing with Devo, so that's going to be amazing. Oh, that's great. Who's drumming for them right now? Is it still Jeff? I don't know. Hmm. No clue. I know Jeff Friedel from like a Perfect Circle was playing drums for them for a bit, uh, but I don't know oh, if he's okay. still there. I don't know if he's yeah, still there. Know. Wasn't Josh Fries the drummer? He was as well. He was as well. Okay. Josh, it's just funny. So Jeff has kind of followed in the same path as Josh because Josh was in Perfect Circle and then he also drummed for Devo for a little bit, and then Jeff oh, got wow, the okay. Perfect Circle and then he ended up in Devo a little bit too. So oh, that's was, funny. Yeah, it was it was cool to see that transition <laughs> for him. Um, I, I I don't know, man. I might have to go to this Vegas show. I'm already going to Psycho. Um, in in so I got Psycho. I've got. Tickets to Meshuga, and I've got tickets to Between the Barrier to Me is coming for an evening of, and uh, I've you know during the pandemic became friends with Paul from Between the Barrier to Me. So great guy, uh, yeah. I hit him up. I'm like, hey man, you want to go get coffee and stuff before the show? Because yeah, I, I, a I'm, coffee company. 
Yeah. I was like, let's go drink some coffee. Let's go to modern times. They, you know, they have beer and coffee and we could do both. Well, he doesn't drink co- uh, beer, but mm-hmm. he can have a coffee. I'll have a beer. <laughs> um, but I still bought a ticket. I was like, I'm buying a ticket to your show. I don't care. You know, if we can hang, that's great too. Yeah. And I keep promoting that to people. Like you need to help out bands right now. This is, this is the time, you it's know? Crucial. It, yeah, if any if any of the bands that survived the pandemic, because a lot of bands quit, you know, like you were saying, lack of motivation too. A lot of people are like, yeah. what what's the point? Yeah, what's did the... some people in? Yeah. A lot of people thought that way. Yeah, you know, I thought that way for a minute, and then I realized that well, I was like, man, what am I, what am I doing? I realized it was just you know, it was bad. I needed to stop dwelling, so I moved on, and you know, I had hard times, just like a lot of other people. But yeah, I saw just you did, the motivation uh... to play. You know, that was tough yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it, like you said, there's no point. Like a lot of live bands or bands that play live, that's, that's how the whole cycle works. You make an album so that you can go tour it. If there's no tour, why make an album? You know, there's yeah. no point. So yeah. I, I, I want to see, see, I want to see those guys too. They're always great live between the Barry and me. And they're really yeah. good dudes. Yeah. Really great guys, man. All of them. Um, I, during the pandemic, I had, I think three of them on the show and they were, they were all in the same boat of like, I don't know. I guess we're just going to start doing live streams. I don't really <laughs> don't know where we're going to go with this. I'm like, all right. right. I, 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 I'm, I'm glad that waste didn't do a live stream. Uh, we thought about it, but Tony lives in Florida. So it wasn't, you know, hmm. and you he's know, working for Florida. WWE now or something, right? I see some posts that he's <laughs> making. Yeah. He's, he's got, <laughs> You know, I'm happy for him. He moved down there. His whole family's down there and all that stuff. And he's having a great time. That's great. Yeah, I, I, I'm honestly, though, it's a weird thing to say, but I'm glad you didn't do a, a live stream because it, I don't think, uh, unless it was like some kind of epic production where you guys are in, you know, doing like kind of like your video for Breathe it Grease or something. Funny. Yeah, it had to be funny and, you know, a party element involved because that's just the vibe of the band you know a, a just a straight performance of you guys would not it wouldn't work you know yeah we need that volley that full contact part you know volley participation mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. you it's really hard to do that when you don't have people there, yeah. you know what I mean? and, yeah. you know and putting it putting a bunch of people at risk during that time wouldn't make no sense just to be in some you know show so yeah, I mean, unless you're one of those bands that are like uh, don't care, like what well, there was a show I saw that somebody they're like, oh, we had a show and everyone got COVID, and I'm like, was it worth it, guys? I think it was Smash Mouth. <laughs> yeah, I think I like, heard about that. It's like, was it worth getting COVID for Smash Mouth, guys? Like, no offense, obviously to Smash Mouth, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> come on. Yeah. Um, uh, it, I want it, to play just as much as the next guy, but. Yeah, just give it a minute, you know. Hopefully we can get past this point. Um I but you know, I one thing that I saw during the pandemic that kind of blew and blossomed was the um the uh, Slay at Home festival which you were a part of recently. Yeah, Frank reached out to me and asked me if I was going to do that. Uh, if I'd be interested and I was real excited. I was like, "Yeah, totally. That's cool." Yeah, and he's like those things like are a week great. later he's like, "What about a Slayer song?" I'm like, "Oh, uh <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah it, it was great though i love the cover and and you know i love the whole idea you know props to frank for putting that together because it really was i remember the first one i was excited like a show i was like oh i get to yeah. see new live music even though it's you know some of them are in their bedroom but whatever it's better than nothing you know yeah. and and did you do uh did you do a two minutes to late night thing too or is that am i yes, thinking I did. you did right yeah Brown. Ron called me up for that one and asked me if I wanted to drum. He was singing. I was like, it was appealing to me. And then him singing was, uh, it was a no brainer. I was like, Oh, I get to do something with Ron. Yeah, definitely. Cool. That Thanks was a King calling. diamond one, right? Yeah. Yeah. No presents for Christmas. So yeah. that, that was my first one. We had a lot of fun with that. And yeah, then I, uh, I did that other one too, the cardiac song with the uh, Sean Knight from child bite. He, he called mm. me up. He said, you want to do this cardiac song? And I got this guy and, and you know, uh, Dan from Voivod playing guitar. And I was like, oh, you, well, you got to get Shane from Napalm because Cardiacs are like his favorite band. He goes crazy for him. Nice. But he didn't know that. So Shane was way into it. 
and then Bruce played sax, and it, it was great overall. So how I mean, how complicated are those things to put together? Because it seems like a lot of work for me. There's like, a lot I, of moving parts for sure. Yeah, there's a lot <laughs> you of all you got to play on the people. click because that way you can synchronize everything, right? Yeah, we just played. I, we just played on top of the song. Like I played mm-hmm. to the original song and sent it to those guys, and everyone put everything around it. It was pretty much a straightforward song, which okay. just had really good. Like uh, it was like almost a you know a metronome in itself. Gotcha, so it was gotcha, easy gotcha. to play along to. Yeah, I just it, uh, you know even my my wife who doesn't know a lot about editing and stuff like that, she was sitting there with me watching and she's like that. That's, I wonder how long it took to put that together because that looks like a lot of work i'm like yeah yeah you have like six seven eight guys in there everybody doing their own video and everybody doing their own recording so it's like double the work then you got to edit the recording to see what footage works and what doesn't mm-hmm. so i'd did, imagine it was a ton of work did you do multiple takes or was it just one straight through shot for you oh we we, uh, we did we did a bunch of takes okay <laughs> it, it's, that way we could have a bunch of uh film you know from different angles and stuff because you didn't know what was going to look best. Right, the Ardent right, guys, right. Uh, me and, and uh, a gentleman named Power Dave who did the, the percussion with me, uh, we did it at, at the in the brewery at Ardent on a Sunday when, when not many people were there. The mm. Ardent guys let us do that. And, man, it was loud. <laughs> we have to crank yeah. the PA up real high to, like, hear it, to be able yeah. to hear to play along with the track because it's I just all know. stainless steel and <laughs> Brutex. Exactly. Yeah, that I've never understood that at like indoor brewery shows. I'm like, this is the worst acoustics for, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for anything. This is a giant warehouse filled with metal. It's like, yeah, this yeah. is not a good idea, guys. The more, the more beer you drink, the better it sounds, right? Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. My band played at a, a Funky Buddha Maple Bacon Coffee Porter Day once. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. And uh, but it was outside, thankfully. But it yeah. was still, it was like, we're, we're, we're such an aggressive band and, and the Funky Buddha crowd was more of the, the, the high end kind of snooty Fort Lauderdale crowd. Um, right. They were a little scared. I had to keep like trying to get the audience to, come on, I'm not going to bite you. We're all like beer. We're all having beer. Cheers. Like, come on. <laughs> right. But it, it's funny, man. I, 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 I love when breweries try to do that but it very rarely works out like dark lord day works out that that's yeah, always well, a good time right yeah well the first time we actually first time we played there we actually played in the brew house Ooh. it was for their 15th anniversary <laughs> okay it was like in the brewery and then like the the first dark lord we played was outside okay is and that happening a, anymore? Is that still happening? Are they still doing that? No. Uh, well, I'm sure they will in the future. Probably they'll probably do it next year. Okay. I think last right. year they did like a drive up, dark oh. lord day. Where you, you know, buy the bottles and all that jazz. I think I don't know what they're doing this year. Hmm. I'd be curious to see that because I've yeah I've I've yet to go. I've yet to go to a dark lord day. It's That's the, the greatest beer music festival in the country. No sweat. Yeah. I, every time, it's every time big, I see the lineup, I'm like, damn it. I wish I was there. It's so much fun. They had the law changed so you can bottle share on the grounds. It's crazy. It's, 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 it's amazing. Yeah, we, we were having issues with that at Cigar City for Hunapu Day. Uh, I remember oh. right before up where I left, they, they were having issues with that. But that's, I mean, that's part of the experience, having the bottle shares there. Yeah. Got to have that. Awesome people from all over the world. Yeah. So tell me, what do you what do you have? Uh, I I know that you know we mentioned already you're doing a beer with with Sam, um, but have you thought about like opening a brewery, working you know doing more with beer in that sense? Uh, yeah, of course I have dreams about that stuff, but I don't know how realistic they are. Yeah, like, I think you can. My, I think you could do it. <laughs> my ultimate dream would be to open a place called Heaven and Hell. Mm. And it would be like, all right, this is really nerdy, so bear with me. <laughs> all right. But, uh, the, the business model would be kind of like McSorley's in New York City. Okay. It's like you, they, you know, there's two beers, one light and one dark. That's it. Mm. So I would have that, and I would have a brewer in mind that I would like to do it. And it would be a sandwich menu, small place. And then I would hire, I don't know how to say his name the right way. 
but one of my favorite painters is Paolo, Paolo Giardi. I forget. He did the artificial brain record and a bunch of other stuff. Okay. Yeah. And this is, you know, me dreaming the wildest dreams. <laughs> if I had an exuberant amount of money, I would fly him over and have him paint one half an inch like, like hell and the other side like heaven. Gotcha. Okay. He's like today's, okay. to me, he's like today's runner's boss. Okay. All right. I, thought, I mean, that sounds great. <laughs> Hopefully yeah, like, you can, you you can make that happen. I, I haven't been, but I've heard about it for sure. Yeah, it's like real kind of like it's the old – it might be the oldest bar in Manhattan. Sawdust all over the floor, like mm. real curt service. Like uh, you walk up there and they go light or dark and then you can't stutter. You have to give them an answer or they move on because it's so busy. Yeah. Uh, I remember the first time I was like, uh, dark. And then these two small mugs are placed in front of me and and that's what you get. Mm-hmm. So you no, get I mean, I love get, that. I love, the time. Yeah. I love that 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 it's simple they keep it simple and 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 there's none of that like hmm i don't know what do you say uh what's the difference between this hazy ipa and this uh dry yeah, new yeah. england I've, style I've, I've definitely been guilty of that <laughs> <laughs> i can't say i have it all right i was so <laughs> crazy about beer at one point you know i, I just wanted to try everything yeah and it's then, funny you know, when you, yeah. get more experience you know how to relax a little bit yeah it's just a lot of options especially you know when you go to a place that like a like a the answer or a mekong's where you know there's like 150 beers on the menu like what do you do <laughs> mekong still has the best list in town by by far it's insane it's insane it's and so then when I, I tell people about it i'm and like you know it's a legit vietnamese restaurant like when you walk in the the decor the food mm-hmm the smell but then also there's 150 beers <laughs> yeah legendary it's so legendary great place. and then the answer has just as many next to four mm-hmm, mm-hmm. the Richmond beer scene is bonkers man there's so much stuff going on there's so many people great making great beer it's pretty exciting is it oversaturated yet like in certain spots like you know Asheville was the big big craft beer spot for a while and then it became yeah. kind of oversaturated with tourism and people moving in Sierra Nevada moving in so like do you feel that in Richmond or is it still kind of good it's, I mean you know you know we've seen a lot of development Scott's edition has really uh, that's where all the breweries are that's where the Vale and Ardent are okay and, and Bingo which is another really great brewery uh and there's a handful of others and cider makers and a distiller, but uh, they started building condos and all this stuff in there. Hmm. And at, at one point they were trying to get an open container law, but a lot of the breweries were like, nah, this, you know, that's going to be, that's going to be ridiculous. It's going to be totally yeah. out of hand. But yeah, so glad that didn't happen. There's certain things. The sloppy level would be off the charts. There's certain things, you know, like I'm all for freedom and, you know, yeah, let's be free America. But Sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like when I yeah, read, I don't that, want to reel it in. Uh, yeah, when I read in, that in Oregon you can walk around with cocaine now, I was like, guys, reel it back a little bit. <laughs> just, just, a, yeah. just a little. That's too much. Come on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, and I, I'm a fan wild. of I'm a fan of chaos and and mosh pits and woo. But but also, come on. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know about open containers. There'd be trash everywhere. I mean, you California is a good example of when you when you lax the laws a little too much. There's homeless encampments everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Venice Beach is no longer a beach, by the way. The pandemic right. turned it into a homeless encampment. Like there's just it is Mad Max tent city right now. Oh damn. I haven't been yeah. there in a while. Yeah, dude. I went, you know, I, I saw pictures and videos. My buddy drove by. He's like, dude, look at this. And I, this is like the area where I used to walk around selling beer to these restaurants. And now it's just chaos. Like, just you don't walk there because drugs and needles and chaos. It's just, it's rough. Oh, you got that gnarly? That's a shame. It's gnarly, dude. But I mean, they're cleaning it up. Apparently now they just, they actually yesterday just passed a bill for uh, a, a, some kind of encampment bill where you know you cannot have tents up in certain areas that are close to schools uh i think churches a couple places that are like family places you yeah, shouldn't yeah. you can't have a half naked dude pooping on the sidewalk <laughs> yeah. There's, yeah there's got to be some type of limit 
Dude, I've seen <laughs> way too many dudes pooping on sidewalks and during the pandemic. There's way too many. Uh, I mean, I, I myself was homeless at one point, but, you know, I, I still went to a bathroom at Walgreens and, you yeah, know, wash up like a tour. Like when you're on tour, you do the little wash up in the sink or whatever. <laughs> I guess when, when drugs uh, show up, heavy usage, it clouds, it clouds the vision. Clouds the judgment yeah. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So, um, okay. So no other beer collabs aside from the one that's already in the works. Um, oh, we got who, some other stuff cooking, but we're oh, not ready, to, to, announce not ready to serve off the meal yet. Ah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Is there a dream brewery for you that, that you want to have a beer with? Like that you want to make a beer with that you already haven't? did? It. Oh, you already did it. Okay. Yeah. Was it three floods? Okay. Yeah. They're the best. Those guys roll. Would you? Would you? Uh, I would love. To, I would love. It. I would. <laughs> all right, super nerd. Yeah. I would love to have a special edition Orval municipal waste beer, but I'll never ever happen. Oh, why not? Just go visit. <laughs> They've only made one beer in the last hundred years, and that's yeah. it. <laughs> I think you can convince them. Otherwise, I'm just kidding. All right. Yeah, I'll wear a robe and not say anything. Yeah, just walk in. Mm, <laughs> hand hand them a CD. You know. <laughs> yeah, That'd man. Cool. Orval. Man. Orval is such a great beer. God damn. It's, a, it's, you know, when, okay, so that's, that goes to my theory that I, I, I always uh, believe in, which is do restaurants that, that, that you go to that have like, oh, we have spaghetti and tacos and burgers and pizza. And it's like, you guys, <laughs> you have, I love, like, there's a place here called Dave's Hot Chicken. That's all they have. They yeah. have hot chicken and it's incredible. And I think that's why, because they don't have to focus on anything else. Just make the one thing really, really good. And yeah. I think that's what, that's the deal with Orval. Like they're doing it well. <laughs> it's not broke. Yeah. Don't fix it. It's, it's not no, broken. You know, now what? My, all right. I do have, I do have one. The dream brewery is Dindola to make a beer with. Dindola. Yeah. They're my favorite Belgian brewer by far. Okay. More than like Orval or Cantillon or something. Yeah, totally. Yeah? Okay. Still not just a beer that changed my life. So th th they make that. And that's that was the first beer I had where I was like, oh, my God, this is beer? All right, I'm in. <laughs> okay. I had no idea it could be that good. Yeah. So whenever it shows up in town, I go buy them all like, and put them in my closet. <laughs> like, like a super nerd. <laughs> Store them. Yeah. I, I, I finally got away from um, – well, no, I'm lying. But, I mean, I guess I've reduced – I, I, I reduced my cellar. I, 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 you know, when I was in the biz, it was, it was intense. You know, at one point I yeah. had like 300 bottles in my cellar and now I've, I've slowly, but surely between bottle shares and just kind of trading with people, like I'll send you a couple bottles here or there. I've gotten rid of most of it. Like my fridge is still full of beer, but, uh, it's not where it used to be at all for sure. Well, fun thing to do, and I've done this. If if you ever creeping into uncomfortable storage territory again, this is a lot of fun to do because probably I mean it took you a while to get rid of that stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So I had this thing at my house years a couple years ago. I don't know, four or five years ago, something like that. Uh, it was called bottles I've had for way too long that should be drank already. Festival. So it was. <laughs> All these people showed up with all these old beers that have been sitting around forever. It was the best way to clean out your cellar. Oh, yeah. And some of them were fantastic, and some of them were complete dud. Some of them are soy sauce and teriyaki yeah. sauce. So, I mean, you're <laughs> opening them and finding out, so you don't have the bottle anymore. It mm -hmm. was a win-win for everybody. Yeah, I did one of those for my departure from Miami. Right before we yeah. moved to L.A., I'm like, look, I can't move to L.A. with – 10 boxes 20 boxes of beer it just can't happen so uh party and we had a big giant bottle share i brought everything out and you know and i told everybody don't bring anything i literally yeah. have like 300 beers like we need to drink them and they, people still brought stuff so it was just it, it was in a ridiculous amount you know how many times i've been to those things and they're like don't bring anything we have we have plenty and i always bring shit <laughs> It's just a customary thing, you know, it's a yeah. customary thing. I mean, it's also, it's, it's part of the culture too. Like you, you feel wrong if you don't bring something 
to a party, mm-hmm. right? I always bring something, whether it's a beer or, you know, a pack of joints or whatever, anything. I got to bring something. You know, you're, you're inviting me to your place. I got to provide you with like a thing. <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, all right. Beers are in the works. How about music? I know, you know, you, you're not just municipal waste. You know, you've got brain tentacles. Did uh, lots of stuff. De- you know, birds Wait. of prey, de- deny the cross. Yeah, uh, yeah. How, um, publicist? Yeah. Am I saying that right? Waste record. I'll go down the list. Okay. Waste records done. Just, it's time now, waiting for pressing plants and all the other stuff to catch up so it actually comes out. Uh, yeah. Good very, time. Very, too, very, very tours. happy with it. Very happy with it. Nice. Uh, publicist will do another record. We've had the whole record de- me- demoed out for two and a half, three years now. It's nice. just time when people can get to it. Uh, okay. Phil and I wrote a whole black metal album together over, over the pandemic. And oh. that was, that's really cool. I haven't played drums like that in a long time. It was, it was fun to do. Uh, and then under attack is another thing I've been doing. And under uh, attack. What's that? Yeah. We've, we've done like 20, we've recorded over 20 songs already this year. What type of music is it? It's punk? like old pissed off hardcore, pretty dark. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. All older guys, <laughs> short and fast songs. Pretty right. pissed off. Yeah, we we uh, had a, a song come out on uh, debut on Revolver today. Actually, three one G's putting our seven inch out in August. Ooh. So okay. it's actually good timing. Yeah, it gives me something to go do after this. All right, that's yeah, good. And I recently. I, man, I had this amazing experience, experience about a month ago. I went to Mexico as soon as I had my second vaccine. I, I went to Mexico with uh, the Dark Matter guys and John Laffler from Off Color okay. on like a chocolate coffee mission because the Dark Matter guys often opened a chocolateria called Sleepwalk. And mm. then the people that helped them with that in Mexico is another chocolatier called Larifa. So okay. they went down there to meet one another and like uh, promote each other's brands and all that. And uh, John and I went along for the trip. And it was such a great experience. I had the best time ever, totally rejuvenating. And on the way back, well, I went to Chicago and flew out with them from there. And mm-hmm. on the way back, we stopped. And Dark Matters was also doing this, called, this uh, series called DMTV, where they have a uh, Dark Matter television where they have okay. a uh, Airbnb that they own and they film and record bands in there and they wound up, you know, and they play it eventually. So on the way back, mm. I got to reconvene with Bruce and Aaron. We did some brain tangle stuff and got a new song, recorded some songs for that. And so that should, that should come out sooner or later. I don't know when, Very but that was cool. fun. We, I haven't, we haven't played together in I don't know how long. So we took the first day to rehearse everything and then, pull it together by the skin of our teeth for the next day. <laughs> That's great. That sounds like a lot of fun. I want to see that. Yeah. Hear that. And it was good. It was good to be productive. I also rode the shit out of my bike on a non-musical note. So that kept me busy as well. Which That's was good. super, super crucial because I would ride my bike and listen to all the demo rehearsals and then, and then the pre-production and then recording as well. And I could really listen to what was going on what i could adjust and, and fix that's good that's good I, I, yeah i was gonna say that that's um there was two ends of the spectrum during the pandemic with that stuff where you either got really fat <laughs> or you got in shape and it seems like you know riding your bike a lot that's good that's healthy that's that's the yeah good i stayed thing. the same I, I got a little beer belly but other than that i stayed pretty much the same I lost weight a little bit, and and I also like yeah. I let my I let my hair grow out. I did this thing where I didn't shave my head for the first six months of the pandemic. Oh wow! And, I want to see photos. Oh, I'll send the <laughs> photos. <laughs> <laughs> I look like a complete maniac. It was it yeah. was just because I only have the sides, not the top. So this oh, yeah? it was it was just like the sides kind of poofing out, and I look insane. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I I I decided to. Uh, we were living in Long Beach uh, at the time, and and now I live in LA. But in Long Beach, the apartment we had had no air, no AC at all. 
Mm-hmm. And I was doing the po- the podcast in the middle of the day, no AC in the summer. And I had a leather couch that I was sitting on and I was just melting into my couch. Just, I couldn't get out afterwards, just stuck, just, and, yeah. uh, and with all of the sweating and the heat and everything, I was like, well, I might as well take advantage of this and start doing stuff. So I start doing like weights and kettlebells and trying to, trying to stay healthy. Cause I was like, if the, if the, if the world, if biology is trying to kill me, let's try and be as healthy as possible so that I, I, don't, I don't die. Perfect for your immune system. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's, 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 that's system, healthy body is a healthy mind. Exactly. Yeah. Better shape you're in, better you're going to feel about it. People need to talk about that a little bit more, man, because they, they don't think about it. You know, they think, oh, the pandemic hit us. Well, guess we should just mask up and hide and, you know, take the vaccine or whatever it is. And, and that's all great. But also yeah. you should do stuff to make yourself healthier, I think, in the process. Yeah, in general, I think the pandemic actually helped people. Real, Some people realize that, actually. Yeah. It, turned, it turned a lot of people around. Have you gone full it's, vegan by the way, yeah, I have actually. Uh, yeah. I uh, after the last U.S. tour, uh, I gave up dairy, which was October 2019. Okay, and then we went to Europe, and Scotty had gone vegan too. Okay, so it was like a body system. All right, cool, because you know over there, and to get it, there's so much amazing cheese and all this other stuff. Yeah, and it was the first time where I didn't eat any of that, and it, it felt weird. I was I was tempted a little bit, but but having the body system made it way easier, and uh, that was really good. But you know what I noticed? I, I dropped, I stopped eating dairy, and I drank just as much beer as I normally do, which which is a, a lot mm. after the set because I'm over there and I want to drink all this great beer that I normally can't get here. And it's yeah. there, you know. Uh, so, drank just as much as normal, and I came home eleven pounds lighter. Ooh! Just from not eating dairy. Okay. It worked really great for my body. Did that? So, did you go all in? Also, in terms of beer, like watching out for lactose in the beer, that kind of situation. Yeah, for the most part, I, I'll eat honey. So, I, I guess if uh, critical vegans. <laughs> or, critical you know, vegans that's a that yeah, should I be mean, the yeah. name of a, a magazine a vegan mag- critical yeah. vegan. <laughs> yeah there's all you know everybody's has their own boat to, to float you know what i'm saying yeah yeah but, but yeah. i feel a million times better i feel huh. great it was really good for my body i think i i might have been lactose intolerant at, at, but to it to uh a certain point i you definitely know, am i definitely no am. more stomach pains or nothing like that yeah, I I can't have regular milk. I've been doing lactate for a couple of years, but even that, I'm starting to figure out like maybe I should just stop. Uh, even that, um, I I don't think I could ever go full vegan, just because I I don't do anything all in like that. Like, I, right. I I I don't think I could ever be sober. Like, I just don't see a use for me personally. Like, I I don't have a problem. I love beer. I love booze, but I'm not yeah, drinking every. I'm not drinking every day. You know, I don't, I don't have a problem. I'm not yelling at my wife or, you know, <laughs> there's no, I, I moderate it. I have a, you know, a beer here or there. And like, it's there, as long as you can keep it into moderation, I feel that's how I live my life where I can, I don't think I can go all in. Like I'm just fully sober. Like I, I'm not going to deny myself if I go to like, oh, I'm fully sober now. And I go to Belgium, I'm just like, I'm not going to drink. Sorry. Like, nope, I'm drinking. <laughs> you got to be able to control yourself. That's, yeah. that's the biggest issue. Yeah. You gotta yeah. know when to say when. I know it sounds cheesy, but <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Well, I've I always been that, the same way. I know that when we hung out at your place, you were dabbling in veganism. I don't think you were all in yet. You were still kind of yeah, well, every once met, in a while. Yeah, when I met in April, we moved in together. She's been vegetarian vegan since she was fourteen. So she's been like, there was never meat at the house. I never made it at the house, uh, made or ate meat at the house, and. I just slowly phased it out. I I haven't eaten meat like four years or something like that. Wow. Okay. And but you I, still you had know, again, but you still had dairy and stuff, right? You yeah, said. still had dairy, and then mm-hmm. it works for me. It's great. It might it doesn't work for everybody, and everybody, you know, I'm not going to think you're an asshole if, you're, if you don't become a vegan. You know, that's silly. 
Yeah, that, it's weird how that that mentality, you know, it, 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 it's in all different things, but the mentality that people get where they have this weird like elitism. To, yeah, the holier than loud thing. I, I've never been in tune with that. I think it's a bunch of hot air. Yeah, <laughs> a bunch of hot air. That's exactly what it is. I, yeah. I, I mean, I and I don't make fun of vegans either. You know, there's the people. Ah, oh, you pussies, whatever it is. You know, like I don't do. It's just another uh, example of closed mindedness. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Do your thing. Do whatever you want to do. And, you know, even myself and you, I know you uh, are kind of like me in that sense, like with religions where I'm not, I don't follow any religion, but I'm also not going to trash you for having yours. Like that's whatever you do, man. That, yeah, if that's, you know, if that's what you need. <laughs> same thing. Same thing here. The only problem I have is when people have a problem with you when you, when they don't, when you don't line up with what they think is the, the only way. Right. Which I think is completely asinine. Yeah. They're just I, too close-minded to realize it. I believe all of the religions work if you are the one, if you believe in it. Like, if you, that's what you're doing. Like, my, my parents do Santeria stuff. Like, my yeah. mother used to be very big into voodoo and Santeria. I'm like, that's nonsense for to me, but it works for you, and that's yeah. fine. Just don't do give me a hard time about it if I don't believe it. Yeah, that's no. all I care about. Exactly. You know? Yeah, and that applies to everything. You know, food, mm -hmm. diet uh music taste i have people that hit me up like, why do you listen to music like that it's satanic and like oh. because i, I like it i guess hail <laughs> satan bro i don't know what to tell you <laughs> yeah right if you I don't like, like it don't listen to it yeah you don't have to listen to it you know it's uh, like a guy that hates ipas reviewing ipas <laughs> right right i hate that, that oh, i never you drink ipas that. it tastes like soap okay well it tastes yeah. like soap to you <laughs> <laughs> not to me i think yeah. I, I i have a different uh sense of taste and smell than you my friend mm -hmm. mm. all right so you've got a bunch of music coming up and 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 touring is, is a inevitability um how do you prioritize like what's what's the the number one thing for you i guess waste right yeah of course yeah everything and in a restaurant it's you know well we have all there's a multiple owners co-owners in April, okay as well so it it runs you know I don't have to be here all the time and you know I do the least amount of work to be honest with you <laughs> <laughs> I'm like a, a gatherer like go to the restaurant depot and get everything that we need for the next I don't know how many days and you know do the dishes clean up you know cook when I need to which which is which isn't that much nice. Have you Sir, thought run about food, you know, answer the phones. I was answering the phone like a madman during the pandemic. <laughs> Have you it's thought like about I felt like opening? a robot repeating the same thing? <laughs> Sorry. No, that's okay. My my computer flashed out. Um, do you have you considered um opening a, another spot, like a, a second location? No. No? Too much work? <laughs> no. We had the truck too, you know, but Oh yeah, you had the we, truck. We weren't, we weren't really doing much with that. We didn't take it out at all. It was like I know people that went out with truck, but we didn't want to interact with like random people all the time. So that's why the truck just stopped. Mm, that makes sense. That makes sense. If you were to if you were to open a second location, would it you know in in theory would it be in Virginia or would you want to go to a different state? I don't know. Hawaii sounds nice. Hawaii, huh? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think uh, L.A. would work for you. It's a very vegan-friendly town. Yeah, there's too much. There's too much going on there. A lot of people are already doing it. Yeah. Did you? Did I? I don't know if you got a chance to see it. I posted a a, a thing that made me very upset. <clears throat> um, that uh, here in L.A., a restaurant selling a Cuban sandwich. And I'm going to read you the ingredients of this Cuban sandwich, Cubano. All right. I mean, I, I'm psyched. I'm. I can't wait to hear this. So let me let me preface it for those that are listening that don't know what a Cuban sandwich is. There are a number of ingredients. It is Cuban bread, mustard, Swiss cheese, smoked ham or deli ham, sliced ham, and then uh, roasted pork underneath. So yes, pork and pork, and pickles. That's it. Nothing else. Tampa people will argue that they're salami, but they're wrong. And I'll tell Joey Redner to his face that he's wrong about that. Um, that's, but, like corn, that's like calling pork roll Taylor Ham. But anyway, go ahead. 
<laughs> so this restaurant here in LA is selling a Cuban sandwich for sixteen dollars. Grilled chicken breast. Oh, failure right away. <laughs> <laughs> right out the gate. No. Yeah. Uh or organic tofu if you're vegan. Also no. So grilled yeah. chicken breast or organic tofu with slightly spicy honey chipotle sauce. That and no offense. And no, yeah, no no offense to you, Dave, but that is one of the whitest things I've ever heard. Slightly what? spicy. Slight like it's not too spicy, don't worry. It's not gonna it's not gonna hurt you. Right. All right, so grilled chicken breast, organic tofu with slightly spicy honey chipotle sauce, fried plantains, goat and cheese, <laughs> organic oh, mixed lettuce, a splash of balsamic dressing, tomatoes, and grilled red onions. That is not – that's like the furthest thing away from a Cuban I've ever heard of. Not a single ingredient. <laughs> And then what? it is served on multi-grain bread. Oh, man. Come on. I bet it's not yeah. even pressed. No, it's not. It's not pressed. It's probably like on a raw. <laughs> it's not even toasted either. It's just a raw, <laughs> yeah. sliced, multi-grain <laughs> bread. <laughs> it upsets me so much when I see stuff like that. I, 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 my friend sent me that. I'm like, dude, who do I need to go slap? Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm honestly considering, st I've been, I've been theorizing a, um, like a comedy skit thing where I, the angry Cuban in LA, where I go to all these restaurants that sell Cubans and just yell at them for the worst Cuban sandwich that they that I've ever seen. But then also, you know, cause we got to have a positive spin. It can't just be anger. Uh, yeah. I'll help them, you know, fix their Cuban food. I'll, I'll it's kind of like re uh, restaurant rescue or whatever oh, that show's called. Yeah, Cuban yeah. rescue. Yeah, I'm gonna cu I'm a Cuban rescue. <laughs> so you'd be like clandestine Cuban. <laughs> it's so ridiculous, man. I've been I've been to every Cuban spot in L.A. and they all suck. Like, <laughs> and they were like, oh, you have to go to Versailles, and I go to Versailles, and there's there no there are no Cubans there. It's all Mexicans, which is fine, whatever. But I asked them, I'm like, can You're I have Cuban? a colada? A colada, right? Like, a, it's a Cuban coffee. It's very, right. it's a standard thing in Miami, just a colada. It's a mm -hmm. cup of Cuban coffee. And the guy's like, what? I'm like, oh, do you not know what a colada is? He's like, we have coffee. I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> that's step one. You're wrong. And then Cuban sandwich comes out on, on a French baguette. And I'm just like, no. Nope. I like how this, fired up you are right now. It's you fun. have no idea. I'm so angry <laughs> at the Cuban food in LA, dude. I mean, there's one I spot, and you, I think you'll appreciate it. There's one spot. It's all vegan. It's called Ecalicua here in L.A. At, at Cuban vegan food, which is an oxymoron, but they do it right. Now, Cu Cuban food, check out. Yeah, Cuban food is all, it's all meat. So the, the Cuban vegan, to me, that phrase is, doesn't work. But right. they, they did it right. They did it right. So it's, it's all... Uh, I think they do like their their shredded beef is actually jackfruit and all that and jackfruit's I, awesome if you do it right. Yeah, if you if, next time you're in town, I'm gonna take you to Echo Lake. Carnitas with it too, really good. Great yeah. carnitas. It's the but, texture. Okay. It's the closest texture to to meat that that uh, you know you can get from a vegetable or a fruit. Yeah. What did did I take you to Cuba, Cuba or no? In I Richmond. So. I don't oh, think so. All right. It'll smoke anything on Cal in California. I'll oh. I guarantee it. If you don't oh. like it, I'll pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, dude, we've been talking for almost an hour, so I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go. But it, it's been so fun catching up with you, dude. I, yeah, I it's miss, great, I man. Miss you. I wish this thing was ten hours long. Yeah, right. <laughs> I miss you, and and hopefully, you know, I'll see you out here sooner than later with a tour. Uh, I need to take my wife out to Richmond so that we can, so I can convince her to move there eventually. <laughs> Let me know, man. Yeah. Um, so everybody that's watching and listening, uh, at Stout Mania, right? Is that the best place to keep an eye on your stuff? Keep an eye out for the collaboration with Cosmic Eye, which I just did one as well. Uh, I might as well talk about it, but we were part of yeah, the big yeah. Vox and Hops um brutal north oh. america thing oh that's right yeah he told me about that yeah and we got to do a beer called i don't really listen to podcasts 
<laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Oh, um, so oh, that's good. that's out now at the at the brewery, and you know I'll have some cans. They're they're shipping some cans out to me, so I can have some out here. Make in LA a Cuban for people. coffee stout. No, so it's a dry lager. Because I'm yeah. now I've I was going to talk about that earlier, but like how you know when when you're in craft beer, you you try and experience like the craziest styles. You go with the sour sour to the heaviest stout, but eventually most beer fans end up coming back to pilsners and lagers. Yeah. So I wanted I wanted to have a nice lager, but I definitely want to do a Cuban coffee stout. I want to make a Cuban coffee, and then make a stout that we can use the coffee in. So that's that's definitely okay, in the cool. plans. Yeah. Um, Sign me for that. I'll drink it. <laughs> but yeah, dude, stay in touch, please. Let me know next time you're in town, and and you know, uh, we also got to talk about music. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we Someone's have a, a close to you now, so. Yeah, we have a little bit of a a, a, a secret project that we're working on. <laughs> We'll, we'll do another one of these whenever that actually comes to fruition. That way we can talk about it. Yeah, okay, cool, man. Brother, thanks again. Stay safe. And I, again, I hope I get to, You know what? I'm, I'm going to try and make it out to uh, the punk rock bowling because it's close. It's a three-hour drive. That's not bad. Oh, wow. That's that's super close. Yeah, that's not bad to me. So I'm going to I'm gonna try and make it out there and at least hang out with you and, and see you and bring some beers. Let me know if you make it out there. I know, I, I'm pretty sure it's sold out, but I don't, I don't know what what all that it means and what it doesn't yeah exactly yeah. and and either way you know it's one of those things when there's a big festival like that even if i don't get to see the show i can still hang out so we can, we hang can go out eat together. white castle <laughs> yes yes they have impossible sliders now right yep yeah. that's great all right brother take care i'll see you around great seeing you thanks take care man Later.